finally, the return of the king in omnibus form. Hey everybody, welcome to another exciting episode, another edition of A Week in Geekdom here on YouTube. My name is Giovanni Melendez, and today we're going to be talking about, finally, The Aquaman by Jeff Johns Omnibus. Now, if you don't know much about me, do know that my favorite DC superhero of all time is the King of Atlantis himself. I love Aquaman, and just the idea that we could get a full-fledged reboot and introduce this wonderful character to thousands and thousands of readers is phenomenal, spectacular. I love the idea of the New 52 because in 2011, I was not reading comic books. I was, I knew about the characters, I had read about them in, in my earlier years, but it wasn't until the announcement of the New 52 where I went, huh, you know, I kind of want to check out comic books again. I want to, uh, see what all the fuss is about, but I don't want to deal with continuity. You know, all the problems that new comic book readers face, I had them back in 2011. Flashpoint was ending, so I picked those issues up, I read everything, and I was like, okay, I don't totally get what's happening, but I do know that it's going to lead to a new uh, DC reboot with uh, 52 brand new titles, and one of them happened to be Aquaman. Now, I had read uh, the character in the 90s, with uh, Peter David, and I loved reading that that comic book back in the day. I also loved uh, his appearances in the uh, Bruce Timm animated universe, uh, Superman the Animated Series, and then the Justice League stuff. I always liked the character, but it wasn't until this famous revamp, if you will, from uh, Mr. Jeff Johns, where we got to see this character in a completely new and interesting sort of way. Gone were the convoluted history of Atlantis, the relationship with Ocean Master or Orm, if you will. Because let's face it, all they did was just confuse everything. Uh, regardless of, it doesn't matter which book you're reading, the origin is more or less the same, but it's slightly tweaked. And over the course of many years, that piles up, and you don't really know what is definitive, especially when it comes to the history of Atlantis, because the city itself is shrouded in mystery. It's a living, breathing city underwater, and, and uh, Peter David uh, wrote it beautifully in the way that the city just remembers uh, its ancestors, and when they pass on, it's as if part of them lives within the city, so the city itself is alive. Then you have the complex history of the two brothers with uh, Ocean Master and Aquaman and all that stuff. Uh, Mira's origins is, is different from, from book to book, uh, whether she's a princess or a queen or uh, she escapes to an alternate dimension, it's another plane of existence, or she is trying to infiltrate Atlantis and murder uh, the king. It, it, it varies, but there is a connective tissue between everything. Atlantis will always be that wonderful city that has been uh, sunk and is underwater. Uh, Aquaman will always be this quote-unquote fish out of water where he is in the middle of, of two roads. He, he answers to the surface world as a superhero and as a powered individual and he answers to Atlantis as a half-breed uh, bastard child if you will of uh, Queen Atlanta and uh, of course of a human father with uh, Thomas Curry those elements will always remain the same you've got a uh, black manta who will forever hold a grudge against our hero arthur curry and you've got uh ocean master orm who will always uh envy his brother for the traits that he lacks uh supposedly so with that said when the new 52 stories began i was really excited gone were uh previous continuities like i said and jeff brings us a more um, sort of a royal drama, if you will. Uh, you have Arthur that has recently 
denounced his uh, royalty, if you will. He doesn't want to be uh, king of Atlantis. He wants to do his own thing. He has to answer to surface uh, problems. Of course, he's part of the Justice League. What what this does is it, it brings us a it brings us into his world in a very simple yet effective way, and we get to see a more vulnerable and more realistic side to a character that, for many years before the New Fifty Two had been the ridicule of uh, pop culture, whether it be TV shows or, or movie jokes or other comic books or, you know, real life people mocking the character for what they think or what they thought was a lame uh, superhero. I happen to like the idea of a character that can explore the depths of the ocean because, yeah, space and all that stuff, but underwater, we really don't know all of what's in there. And just uh, the whole uh, sunken city and the, the mythology of, uh, of an Atlantis that once was at the peak of civilization and how their uh, avarice and greed and power uh, determined their own demise. And of course, beautiful characters like Mira, one of my favorite ladies in comics and how much of a badass she is in every single way. Uh, plus Arthur himself, the idea that you can be of different backgrounds and have the strength, unity, passion, and commitment to unite races to do uh, good to, for a common goal. Those themes speak to me, and I really like it. Plus the whole thing with the marine life. How cool is it that you can command uh, and influence sea life and, and do uh, all sorts of amazing things? He's an underwater Superman, for Christ's sakes. Uh, I love the character so much, and with the New 52 run... I loved them even more. I thought the stories, uh, we get four major stories. You've got the Trench, you've got the Others, you've got uh, Throne of Atlantis, and the Dead King. There is an underlying theme of royal succession. There is a theme of duality and the characters, um, you know, fighting against preconceived notions, of course, uh, stereo uh, stereotypes or misconceptions about uh, what Atlantis must be like or what the surface dwellers are uh, doing and uh, how we can generalize people uh, on the actions of a uh, few individuals. Those are some of the running themes in the book. Of course, it goes further along with the whole mythology of Atlantis and you get introduced to new elements like the trench and the, the trench monsters, if you will, which if you saw the movie, uh, you will recognize them as these humanoid piranha looking uh dudes that uh, just want to eat everything up and they come from an, an an abandoned section of atlantis and a previous kingdom johns is able to do what he does best and it is expand these characters rework them in a relatable human way and world build the heck out of the character we get introduced to concepts like the trench like i just mentioned we get introductions to uh the or i should say the concept of the seven kingdoms of how atlantis uh, uh operates we get to look at the daily life inside atlantis we get to understand a little bit more about zebel and how or how or why they're trapped in uh the bermuda triangle if you will you get to explore solo issues with Mira and her train of thought, how she views the world around her and her admiration and love for the character of Arthur Curry. You get issues where it's dedicated to expanding Arthur's origin with uh, the friggin' uh, The Others team. And, and that team is phenomenal. It is a great swashbuckling story about one, ancient Atlantis relics, two, uh, the mistrust that Arthur has for humans as well as Atlanteans, uh, you know, being shunned his entire life for being one thing or another. And then you got uh, Throne of Atlantis, which is sort of this epic culmination of the previous two stories, and it, it gives us uh, the full marriage of sea and land interacting with each other. The Justice League has to intervene on a possible war that can spread. It's all sorts of crazy fun that I absolutely recommend for everybody. It is a very blockbustery ride, if you will, action-packed. The dialogue is fairly simple and fairly uh, uh, entry-level for a lot of people that they can get accustomed to a reading about these characters that you see here on this beautiful omnibus. So when you do get a full blast of mythology with the Dead King storyline, 
you're already strapped in. You are already game for uh, whatever's going to happen to these characters. And I, I cannot recommend this book enough. It is quite phenomenal. I don't like spoiling things in my videos. I don't, I'm not a fan of that. I just give you my honest review on the book. So I can't really go too much into detail unless you guys want me to do like a spoiler discussion. I, I don't know. But I thought that seeing the evolution or the themes um, in these four stories continue to grow and present us with uh, an Arthur that is very royal, very sure of himself, and very composed, um, to see him evolve and grow into the king of Atlantis, if you will, is very awesome, very cool. Like I mentioned earlier, it's a very uh, blockbuster type story. The It is action packed. The one thing I would say as a negative uh, would be that sometimes the story flows by really quick and I would have wanted a slower pace. And that has, that has to do with the story, but also has to do with the actual art as well. Ivan Reyes, one of the best comic book artists in modern times, one of my favorites. Same with uh, Paul Pelletier working on this book. They give us a lot of splash pages, a lot of cool panels and reveals, but they're very big, wide, and cinematic, so it makes the reading experience that much faster. You can knock this omnibus, which is a couple uh, hundred pages, I, I can't remember the exact number right now, but you can knock this out uh, easily in a day, no, no sweat, and it leaves you wanting more. Unfortunately, Jeff uh, left after writing 25 something issues and Jeff Parker uh, took the reins. I did a video on that stuff and Cullen Bunn and Dan Abnett uh, on my channel if you want to check it out. But overall, it's just a really great, fun ride. If you want to get invested into why Aquaman is the character that he is and how much of an influence this book, this whole book, this whole run had on the billion dollar uh, movie, uh, you gotta check it out. It, it is phenomenal and I, I wholeheartedly recommend it. I am geeking out and I've read it several times. I read it when it came out in singles, like I said. I read it in trades and hardcovers and now I upgraded, of course, to the Omnibus. The Omnibus itself, it's, it, it's fairly, you know, it's lightweight and it has some really cool uh, character sketches and artwork and behind the scenes and panels and stuff that I thought was pretty cool. Uh, I'm usually, like, if the extras are there, I don't mind. I just like looking at the cover galleries, but it's always fun to see uh, sort of a sneak peek at, when, at, at what went into the making of these characters. As for the art, I gotta say, man, the art in it is phenomenal. Uh, Ivan took this, uh, like I mentioned, it's a very royal heavy book, so everybody has this regal composure, and they all look so freaking fantastic and beautiful doing their thing. I was blown away. It was a shame when Ivan left. He left earlier than Jeff and Paul took over, but at the same time, Paul gives this... this uh, comic book uh, pop feel that I really love and the usage of colors in this book are really vibrant especially when you are in Atlantis and you're seeing the marine life and the costumes and jewelry and all that stuff both artists really did a phenomenal job bringing uh, the story to life and kudos again to uh, Jeff Johns for not only rebuilding, reconstructing, and just um, expanding on the mythos, but making him relevant and making him cooler. Because he was already cool. Just, you know, he upped the ante, if you will. And just bringing us a story that everybody can enjoy and everybody love because the character is important. He is part of DC history for more than 75 years. And he deserves the top praise that he never got. But I am thankful that since the New 52 up until uh, this year, 2019, we have gotten that. It's a slow progress, but I am so happy about it. So yeah, um, what do you guys think? Have you read the Aquaman uh, Omnibus? 
Tell me what you think down below. And if you haven't, but you've read other stories, let me know which of the many, many uh, runs that the, characters is, that the character has had is your favorite. Is it Peter David? Is it, is it Jeff Parker? Uh, Jeff Johns? And Keith Giffen? And all these other great writers that have uh, worked on uh, my beloved Arthur Curry, my favorite DC superhero, Aquaman. Um, let me know down below. I'm very interested in finding out. Thank you once again for liking, commenting, and subscribing to A Week in Geekdom. As always, you can follow me on your favorite social media platform, and we can keep the conversation going. Just type A Week in Geekdom, and I'm probably there for you. All right, I have got to go. I will catch all of you on our next installment. <laughs>